you have a very good look to the machine house. We enter the condensation chamber. In this room it was very hot and the radiation was really high. Although Austria claims to be a nuclear-free state for years, Austria has its own nuclear power plant. This is the main entrance. In this cabin the security uh, staff was sitting, checking uh, who is entering and leaving the nuclear power plant. Uh, here the, uh, the whole staff entered the, uh, the building. They change their clothes here. Uh, after doing their duty, they had to take a shower uh, on this side yeah, because uh, they washed up the radiation from their skins. Um, and from here, they went to, uh, to doing their job inside the nuclear power plant. This power plant is situated on the bank of the Danube River near Zwentendorf. It was built from 1972 to 78. When it was done, fuel rods were put into the reactor, but then something went wrong. Here everything was ready for operation. Uh, the only thing, is here, everything was here including the fuel rods. Uh, the only thing uh, which was Missing here was the official permission to, uh, to put the power plant into operation. In 1978 there was a referendum. The result was close. 50.5% voted against commissioning. Paradoxically, the unpopular Prime Minister Bruno Kreisky, supporting the startup, changed the result against him. He promised if the referendum would be against the start, he would leave politics. Later, he didn't keep his promise. We are not now going by elevator to 39 meters and to have a short look into the reactor. Okay. It's directly under the roof of the, of the yeah. building. The nuclear power plant has two big uh, buildings. One is the machine hole with where the turbines and the generator are. And the second, the bigger one, is the uh, reactor building. Uh, and now it's, it's more than 45 meters high. And now we have taken a look into the reactor. Austria planned to build a total of three nuclear power plants. Zwentendorf is a boiling type reactor. It is slightly more simple in construction than pressurized water reactors, but turbines are contaminated with radioactive steam during operation. Zwentendorf was supposed to have 700 megawatts output. Let's have a look into the reactor from the crane. There is an interesting difference compared to Czech power plants. The protective containment doesn't include the reactor hall, but only the reactor itself and small space around it. The, the scheme of uh, the power plant, the machine house. Yeah and the reactor building and we are now, now here on 39.4 meters directly under the roof yeah. and we look down uh, into the reactor. There is a pool for cooling spent fuel next to the reactor shaft. When fuel needs to be replaced, the space above the reactor is filled with water up to the level of the cooling pool and the spent fuel rods move completely submerged. I was in Czech power plant on time fuel rods being replaced. 
Let's compare how it looks like and how it would look like in Zwentendorf. You have a very good look to the machine house. The engine room originally had three turbines. One of them was sold as well as the generator. The engine room now serves as a space for events. This is the containment. Upper, this is the upper part of the containment. Uh, it's a possibility to go inside uh, but only uh, two weeks a year because after one and a half a year a reactor like this uh, is refurbished and they are changing parts. Uh, then they open uh, this door uh, to go inside the containment. The Zwentendorf power station became the Potemkin village for seven years. After the decision not to start it, it would be logical to have here only the staff guarding the building. Instead, until 1985, all employees came here as if the power plant was working. Throughout the period of so-called conservation, they had to be bored here very much. Here you see where we are. Uh, at first we have been at 39 meter, now we are at 27 meter, uh, taking a look inside the containment. Yeah. Our third stage will be at 10 meter. Um, we will enter the containment uh, through a door uh, we made some years ago. Uh, normally there is no door because the whole uh, containment is filled with water, yeah. uh, but here we have no water inside and we made a door for the trainings. The unused power plant has one more purpose, training of personnel, especially from German nuclear power plants is held here. There are several very similar power plants in Germany, there is still one running until now. Now so. we enter the condensation chamber. A room filled with water in a nuclear power plant. Here we have no water inside. Uh, in a working nuclear power plant of this type, uh, you have up to 2,800 cubic meters of uh, power plant water. It's like distilled water. Um, but here there's no water inside, so we can enter this room. <laughs> And this room has a very special acoustic. Next place we visit is the room with the control rods. We are just entering below the reactor. This reactor was controlled from below. From here, uh, they put into the reactor the driving rods. Yeah. It's a room full of technology. And over there, you see the, uh, the rest, what is resting of the period of conservation. If the power plant was actually put into operation, it would be impossible to see this place as a visit. Everything operational. Yes, it's a telephone used in coal mines. Yeah, uh, a very because in this room it was very hot and the radiation was really high, uh, and this is a very stable uh, telephone from a coal mine. The mine phone is here because of its resistance in contaminated area. During operation, stuff would enter here for a very short time because of security reasons. Uh, there have been controls two times a day uh, in this area. But the engineers doing the controls uh, were forced to keep it very short. Yeah? And uh, there was an obligation uh, to leave the nuclear power plant uh, for some days afterwards. 
This power plant costed about 1.5 billion euros in today's currency. By the way, it is an operating power plant. 10 years ago, a thousand solar panels was installed here. They generate as much electricity per year as a reactor would produce in 19 minutes. So this is the control room? Yeah. There is 5 to 12. Obviously, this time was set up by someone who is glad the chain reaction never started here. 484 fuel rods in the reactor, 121 driving rods. The control room of uncommissioned power plant is one of the places that comes to life most often during staff exercises as well as during filming. After the plant was not started, there was a plan to adapt it to a steam gas, but adapting a power plant would be more expensive than building a new one. So this plant now has one permanent employee. He controls a total of 1000 rooms. But power plants were constructed here. And it's a very bizarre paradox that anti-nuclear activists do not like to hear. The Austrian distribution network was already adapted to the new source. After its failure, it was necessary to replace it. So, six kilometers away, two thermal power plants were built. A coal from Poland and from Bohemia is transported here. And the paradox? Nobody has told Austrian voters before the referendum that coal contains some uranium. When it's burnt, uranium gets into the air. An operating thermal power plant emits more radiation than operating nuclear power plant. So, near Vienna, there's a larger nuclear fallout. Finally, Austria is not quite a country without a reactor. There was built a total of three small research reactors. One of them is at the University of Vienna, still operating. The good question is why? Studying an atomic power in Austria is like studying to be an astronaut in Czech Republic. <laughs>